Hey guys, Alexander here, and in this video we will be deriving the distribution of the sample mean when we're sampling from a population that is normally distributed. Firstly, let's start off with the population. We are sampling n results, so x1, xn, from a population that is distributed normally with a mean of mu and a variance of sigma squared. So we're interested in what is the distribution of x bar? What distribution does x bar follow the distribution of the sample mean? So we know that x bar is equal to one over n times the summation from i is equal to one to n of x i. And we know that all of these x i are i i d normal with mean mu and the variance of sigma squared because we're randomly, randomly sampling from a normally distributed population. So to get the distribution that X bar follows, we will make use of, of a few results that we have derived in previous videos. Firstly, we're going to make use of the moment generating function. So we're going to make use of the moment generating function of X bar. And that is equal to the moment generating function of one over N times the summation from I is equal to one to N xi of t and you should be very comfortable with working with the, this type of result in moment generating functions and if you are not i highly suggest you check out my video in the probability series playlist where i talk about moment generating functions in statistics because in that video i i provide two crucial results and formulae that uh, will make our life of deriving the distribution for the sample mean really really easy Okay, so this can also be written as the moment generating function of x1 over n plus x2 over n plus all the way up to xn over n. And we do it for a t. So these are niid random variables and each of them are independent with each other. So we can factor them into this format. So this is a result that is um, from the video moment generating function in statistics. So it is it becomes m of x1 over n of t to the power of n because we have n i i d random variables that we're dealing with. And furthermore, if we have this type of format of the moment generating function where we have some constant a multiplied by a random variable, so and we want to find out what is the moment generating function of a x t. Well, that's going to be equal to the moment generating function of x, but instead of t, we substitute in a times t. So let's use this result over here. So this is going to simplify further to the moment generating function of x1 at t over n to the power of n. And the moment generating function of x1, if x1 follows the normal distribution, well, we've already derived such a result in the video um, derivation of the moment generating function of the normal distribution, which I'll link up here in the corner. So we know that the moment generating function of x1, if we're just resolving it at t, it's equal to e to the mu t plus a half sigma squared t squared. And an important thing that I'd like to point out over here is that the mean mu is always the one that is multiplied by the t over here. The variance is always this term that is multiplied by a half t squared. So from this, we can conclude that x1 is distributed normally with the mean of mu and variance of sigma squared. So let's go find out now, what does m of x bar of t actually evaluate to? So using the results that we have down here, let's make the substitution. So it's equal to e to the mu t over n, because we're plugging in t over n instead of t, because we have t over n over here. We have t over n. So we're going to plug that in over here, and we're going to go plus a half sigma squared times t over n squared, and all of this to the power of n. Now, let's go simplify the parts inside the brackets. We end up with e to the mu t divided by n plus a half, so plus one over sigma squared t squared 
all of this divided by n squared. So it's a half sigma squared t squared over n squared. And this is all to the power of n. So we can go and simplify that further. We multiply in the n. So it's n mu t over n plus sigma squared t squared n over 2n squared. And let's go cancel out. So we've got an n and an n that cancel here. An n and n squared, this becomes 1 over n. And finally, we're left with e to the mu t plus a half sigma squared over n t squared. Notice that I have grouped the sigma squared and the n together. I've grouped them together to make this term over here and this term over here. So we see that the m of x bar of t, the moment generating function of x bar, looks almost exactly like a normally distributed random variables one. And it is in fact, but it's a normally distributed random variable with a mean of mu, but a variance of sigma squared over n. And that's that. That's how we derive the moment generating function of the sample mean, or when we're sampling from a normal distribution. And we see that this means that x bar follows the normal distribution with a mean of mu and a variance of sigma squared over n. So if we have to go derive the results for expected value of x bar, we know it should be equal to mu. And if we have to do the variance of x bar, we know it's going to resolve to sigma squared over n. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this quick little video has helped you understand the distribution of the sample mean and that it has also shown you the importance of the accumulation of knowledge and skills and tools that you have to do when you're studying um, probability and statistics. Because we've made use of results from moment generating functions. So we've made use from moment generating functions. We've made use of results of our knowledge of the normal distribution. And putting these things together from the probability theory playlist, we were able to derive the distribution of the sample mean um, that we are going to use as very crucial results as we move forward in the mathematical statistics playlist. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Work Commander out.